the last of our Illustrator or Gravit Designer, aka our vector assignments, is going to be something similar to what I'm currently showing you on screen. This is actually one that comes from a couple of different source graphics that I found, um, which is these two guys and decided, okay, fine, we'll do a version that sort of combines the best of from these. And this is what I put together in Gravit. So I'm actually, all the other ones I've done in the other order, but I wanted to make sure that everything that I was wanting could happen in both of the software packages. So if you're starting from these, you can have the graphics open as inspiration. You do not need to place them. You do not need to trace them. Just sort of know that this is what you're working towards. I'm gonna to start with the eggs and we'll work our way along. Uh, it's probably gonna be in a bunch of different pieces just because they get kind of long. All right, so first thing, shape primitive. Egg is an ellipse. I mean, obviously not exactly an ellipse, but that's where it starts from. So to make an egg, from an ellipse, you're going to narrow one of the ends a little bit. You're going to widen the other end a little bit. And you're going to move the bottom away from the center point a little. And once you've done those things, you usually have something that looks fairly eggy. Um, you might want to go a little narrower with the other end, or you might want to move the other end a little bit closer to your um, center point, basically. But the idea is, it just should not be a perfect ellipse when you're finished, um, because they come out of a chicken. They're they're not perfect. All right, so we end up with our egg form, and I'm going to do all of my eggs based off of this object. So I'm going to make a bunch of copies. Alt dragging or um, option dragging to create my copies. They can go off the edges if they need to. They can be out of the way, but I'm going to need them later on, and I've got that. All right, so for my first egg, I'm actually even going to use two copies to create it, and I'll explain why in a minute. I am going to create the polka dotted one as the first, and I'm going to need a variety of different size polka dots, so I could draw one and create a bunch of different sizes. Um, after copying it, or I could just draw a whole bunch of different size dots, and that is the approach that I'm going with. Once you have them, you're going to start to worry about the coloration and so forth, and at some juncture, I'm going to need to turn the stroke off, because I don't want the stroke turned on on all these, but invisible white dots against a white background are not a whole lot of fun either, so I did just want to at least have something as a starting point. I'm going to go ahead and pick a color for my egg. Um, the sample one that I was working from had, okay, that is one really brown, uh, had orange as its jumping off point, uh, but more of a pastel orange than I have here, so just know that you can tweak the colors, that I'm not going to get really uptight if yours is exactly like the sample one. Just work, you know, towards something that looks similar to what we're talking about. It doesn't have to match perfectly. I'm going to turn off the stroke because I don't need it for this, and I'm going to start to think about coloring the dots. If you want, you can have the swatches panel open and you can pick from the swatches, but they're really bright. So you may want to, at the very least, consider um, trying to find a swatch panel that might be a little bit more um, consistent and with Eastery looking or spring, you know, sort of a spring look to it. Uh, there is a neutral um, nature, etc that might get, I'm really having to move this across, it goes way out in terms of the, um, let's see, what comes up in nature under beach, yeah, actually there's some nice pastels in there, there's not a lot, a huge range, but there's a lot of really nice turquoises, so, yeah, that's not bad, uh, I may pick a couple more of the swatch pa uh, palettes, just because, I do want a few more colors to work from there, but that wasn't half bad. Color books. Somebody does a pastel palette entirely. Yeah, pastels and neons is under the Pantones. So if you do color books and you come down, you can do pastels and neons coded and you get this really great chart. It makes things a lot easier. If you're working in um, things like Illustrator, you'll have more range of options than you would in 
grab it. So um, this is definitely preferable to any palette I run across there. And I can just have fun picking lots of um, different colors. Now do bear in mind that you want to make sure you're changing the fill, not the stroke, because we're trying to come up with a range of things. And I am gonna wanna come over to all these and turn the stroke off. Um, and of course, that's not what I meant to do. Let's not have the egg that I've already colored selected as part of this, and it will make what I'm about to do a lot better. So I'm gonna turn the stroke to none. I'm gonna turn the fill of everything temporarily to the same color so that I don't have anything that's invisible. Um, and from there, I'm ready to go. So fill and stroke are in the bottom. The one that looks like the solid is fill, the one that looks like the outline's a stroke, and the red slash is what turns it off. So I now have an awful lot of turquoise, but it's pretty easy now that I have this range of stuff going on to just come through and pick lots of different colors that I like the looks of. They can be, you know, earthier or not. And I can really play around. I can come into some of the more neon -y ones that are further down and even pop some of those up. So there's a lot of really soft purples which I like, but I'm not sure that's what I want for my Easter eggs. Hmm. That's better. And I don't need a whole lot more. I think I'm pretty close. I could use a few white dots. Now they'll disappear if I do anything with them right now, so I'm going to hold off, but I know that what I may come to later uh, is going to be some white ones. Alright, but that's a nice range that I'm working from. I can add these to my egg okay, that one is really not showing up very well oh that's better and probably didn't know this many dots would really fit on there but it's a surprising the large number that usually will fit if you want something to sort of have a look similar to what I think I'm going for here. I don't know. Okay. I need a couple more teeny dots to fill in what I view to be slightly gappy spots. And that's a lot closer to where I wanted to be with this. So, all right, um, I've got now the polka dotty thing happening. I need a border to go around this. And I could do that one of several ways. It kind of depends on where my polka dots are placed. And I want at least, I want to show you at least one dot that hangs off the edge. So I'm going to take Mr. Purple one over here. And I am going to use the outline version I've got happening to help me out. I'm going to select both the big purple polka dot and the egg that's behind it, and I'm going to use my Pathfinder palette. The one I want to do is going to be the one that gives me the intersection. I want it to get rid of pretty much everything else. I just want to be left with that little part that intersected that section of the egg. The difficulty is I didn't think about where it actually needs to go. It needs to go on the upper part, so let's do that instead. Sorry, but I'm going to do the same thing again. So intersect leaves me with just that little piece. If I were working with the circle, the placement wouldn't have mattered, but I I'm not, I'm working with something that has a very irregular shape. So I needed to cut it in the right spot. The difficulty with doing that intersect is you lose both your original shapes uh, and you're only left with the overlap section of those two pieces, which is why I did it with a copy rather than the original. But to me, that looks a lot more interesting. And now I'm gonna take this guy uh, which was the copy, and I'm going to put a dark orange on it that has um, a little bit more color depth to it, and I'm going to make this a stroke. And I'm going to layer this over the other shape. The reason that I can't just put a stroke on the object that's there is what I'm about to show you.
where the purple overlaps, it looks strange. It, and there's no real good way of fixing that. So what I'm going to do is essentially treat the stroke and fill as two separate forms. And so the second object, which is this one I've got below, which is an exact copy, I'm going to put the stroke on. And I'm going to go with about 10 point stroke. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to position it correctly. It doesn't look any different than it did a second ago, and that's because it's not in the right place. It is behind the purple polka dot. But because it's the second object, I can bring it forward. So I can actually do bring to front, and it'll put it in front of the purple, purple polka dot or any others that were hanging off the edge and solve that particular issue for me. And now that egg is done. I can group it, which is Control or Command G or Object Group. And it now allows me to select that as a complete object. So that's my first egg. Uh, I'm going to pause the video, start it again. Um, for the second egg and keep going until we have all these pieces done.